So with progression in the Champions League looking less likely than Noel turning up at Liam's birthday party, this looks like the penultimate episode of Sub-Zero Hero, but... What an episode it is. We've got a Norwegian Cup final. We're taking on Boda Glimt. This could be our last chance to see our Sub-Zero heroes lift silverware. So although we are a few minutes from kickoff for a major cup final, thoughts inevitably turn to our Champions League campaign. What do we do for that Manchester United game? What should we have done for that Milan game? Are we revelling in the fact that we came from 2-0 down to snag a point? Or are we looking at the tactical incompetence that gambled on a 4-3-3 that you'd not used in months and got your 2-0 down inside 13 minutes? Or are we looking at the fact that both Espin Larsen, Pleem and Christian Pettersson had good chances to actually have won this game? I mean, look at this. We had an XG of 2 against AC Milan. In fact, taking that opening 13 minutes out of them, we pretty much shut them down when we played that 4-4-2 formation. Maybe we should just remind ourselves how far we've come. Because I have to keep reminding ourselves that we started this series 19 seasons ago and we were in the Norwegian 2nd Division Group 1 playing a short and COVID-affected season. We weren't able to get out of that division for the first four years. We were still semi-professional. We hadn't had our first youth intake through. So to be looking at going out to play Bode Glimt, who dominated Norwegian football over the last two decades in a cup final, fresh off the back of taking a point against AC Milan in the Champions League. Well, I guess we've got to say that this has been a successful season and a successful series in developing youth players. But we would like to cap it by winning the double-double and with maybe the chance of a miracle against Manchester United. Let's show you the team that we're going to throw out there for the cup final today. And we are going with our strongest lineup for the cup final, aided by the fact we've got a 10-day gap before the Manchester United game. We are nervous about that Manchester United game, by the way, because we can't schedule any training for the three days before that game. It goes too deep into December. I have a horrible feeling that football manager might send the entire squad off on their end-of-season break, and we might end Sub-Zero Hero playing a team of greyed out players against Manchester United. Let's hope that the game is clever enough to figure out that we are still continuing our season after this cup final has taken place. We're going to go with one is arguably our strongest lineup. We've got our regular back four. We're going to have our twin strike partners. We're going to go out there and try and take the game to Bode Glimt and win final silverware glory for our Sub-Zero heroes. Let's see if the script lives up to what we're hoping. Okay, and the cup final is underway. Bode Glimt are still a very good team, by the way. They've got some pretty decent players. And we played against AC Milan just, what, three or four days ago. So this is by no means a gimme. We're going to have our work cut out today, but wouldn't it be a beautiful way to end our domestic campaign by winning a League and Cup double for the second season running? However, Boda Glimp are doing all the early running. We're nearly a minute into the game, and I'm not sure we've touched the ball yet. As Boda Glimp thump it out of play, hopefully, it's just an odd kickoff highlight, and we can start to assert a little bit of pressure against the Boda Glimp defence. They've got the ball again, though. And they are playing pretty well in this opening couple of minutes. We've got players not getting their tackles in, and they are around the back of us. And I was worried that could be a penalty, but it's just a corner kick. Well, they are certainly threatening at the start of the game. Monnier has claimed the ball, and it looks like they are going to counter-attack with acres of space ahead of them we've got the men back deal with it pretty well to be fair and Sturvold who's picked up a booking 
is on the ball. We look to try to create a little something now. He's got the space. He's given it to Pettersson. Larson Pleem is carrying a knock and has had an effort. That is worrying with the Man United game looming. I think we might be looking at losing Espen Larson Pleem in the cup final. We'll wait until this highlight's over. And it is over with the offside. And we're going to go and assess the injury, see how bad it is. It could be time to be calling on the bench already. Okay, back underway. A little bit of a disaster. Potential groin injury. He could well be out of the Man United game. We've taken him off. Roy the boy is on. And he's going to have to be an unlikely hero for us this afternoon. He's certainly involved a lot earlier than we were expecting. We've got all the way to half time. We've not really played too well in that half. The XG is exactly even we are going to have to go and tell our boys that they have got to perform an awful lot better in this second period okay the second period is back underway and we are straight into some highlights Jurgensen's up from right back again and he has been brought down maybe a set piece might give us a bit more hope but no it doesn't even lead to a highlight and Sturvold is infield giving the ball away. And what? We're still only three minutes away from the halftime break. And we're having to do some defending. And I'm actually starting to feel like this has got a bit of a nasty feeling attached to it. I feel like we could be ending our domestic campaign with a red card for Sturvold and a defeat. In the Norwegian Cup final, this man has not made more than two tackles in his entire career. He saved them both for this game. And now we really are up against it. OK, we're back underway. We've been forced into a, a slightly lopsided 4-4-1. But Roy the boy is a slightly more advanced winger over the right-hand side. But Sturvold has let everybody down with that sending off. However, we have got a highlight and we could really do with a goal and something to cling on to because this is turning into, well, not the afternoon that we were hoping for. The highlight has eventually made its way over to Boda Glimt and they are in down our left-hand side in Jurgensen. Well, he stayed with his man. He's forced him back, but they are pulling the overlap on us. And maybe we need to make another change and get a more conventional right winger on because oh, they have cracked the bar. In fact, that's the change we're going to make now. Do we look at subbing the sub and taking Roy the boy off? That is indeed the change that we have made. We've got some tired players out there, but Roy the boy has come on for Larson Pleem and come off again. And Christian Bernson is going to play as a wide midfielder over on the right-hand side. Or I say he's going to play there. He's now picked up an injury. Sometimes it feels like this is awfully scripted. We're going to have to find somebody else to go out and play on the right now. It's going to be our last change as well. This is looking like a bad afternoon in the office. Okay, back underway. The judge is on. We're 4-4-1-1. We've got no more changes to make. Another injury. And it's game over for us. And we are just giving the ball away at will. And we are looking a little fragile in this cup final. Kirkbold's got the ball. Can we get it wide to one of our wingers? Instead, we've gone too early to Pettersson. And we've given the ball away again. And the longer they keep the ball and the more we're chasing it, the more tired our 10 men are going to get. Here's the judge. He's gone past two. He's gone past three. Oh, I thought the judge could have been the hero of the hour. We could be heading our way towards extra time. You know, four minutes left. They are looking just as tired as we are, to be honest. I'm not sure if they've made all their changes. This is going to have been a tough game on the legs. We're going into an extra time period. We can't say that we don't serve up drama. OK, extra time is underway and Boda Glimt are coming out of straight away. Oh, those challenges in the box worry me, but Jurgensen makes a good one. He fires it out of play. And the highlight actually continues with the throw in. This is a concern because if we go a goal down with 10 men, 
I'm not entirely sure how we get ourselves back in the game. And Jurgens has made another challenge in the box. And Bratton has fired it out for a corner. We're having to do a lot of backs to the wall defending at the start of this extra time period. Oh, could we just catch them on the break once? Could this be the occasion? We're playing out from the back. Kirkbold. Don't go forward too early. He hasn't. Although Bratton has and Reinholdson's not going to win anything in the air. But Christian Pedersen could win a foot race. He's got a lot of work to do. He's got support with him. Skog Frank Pedersen, virtually anonymous for this game. Jawad up from left back. We've not seen him get forward, but we have seen him get forward now. He slung across into the box. The judge... Well, he made a long-awaited appearance in this game. Roy the boy goes off, having come on for Burnson. Burnson lasts 10 minutes before he gets injured. And we said the Reinhold doesn't make many headers. But he's made one there, and he's made it count. And we're still early on in extra time. We have got some incredibly tired legs, but look at Boda Glimt. They are out on their feet as well. As we get to half time in extra time, we might make a couple of tactical tweaks. If we can see this through, well, this would be a hard earned victory. Okay, we are back underway. I think we've got seven players that could all do with being substituted out there. Not helped by the fact that one of our subs has been injured and another one of our subs I've taken off the pitch. I'm questioning whether that was the right decision now, I guess. It ended up with the judge getting on the pitch and he scored the only goal of the game so far. So maybe there was some method to what was undoubtedly madness. We're into the highlights again. Bratton's on the ball. Jurgensen still overlapping. Although he's only eight years old, so he's probably got lots of energy. Pettersson had a chance to put the game to bed. What a shame that he could not take it. We've got nine minutes left. At some point, we're going to have to throw some more time wasting on and pull those lines back. We've got five minutes to go. We've thumped a ball forward and given it away. We've got defending to do. Should the time wasting have gone on already? Maybe not. Bratton's won the ball back. Jawad, the hero with the assist for the goal. And we are looking for Christian Pettersson to get on the edge of the shoulder of their last defender. And run in behind. Now we've gone. We've got the ball to Bratton. This is pretty cautious play. I have already made a couple of time-wasting tweaks. Maybe they're helping us keep possession of the ball. They've got Skog Van Pedersen and it's not a great shot. Their goalie should probably have held it rather than push it behind. Yeah, Because they've got the ball with their keeper. They've gone long. We've picked it up. After this highlight, we're going to make some changes. We're going to throw on more time wasting. And we might drop the tempo just a little bit further. We've given the ball away, though. And they're going to get in behind us. They're as tired as we are, but they've at least got that extra man. We've charged it down once, twice. Pick the ball up, Monnier. It was not a back pass. The highlights have continued and I still haven't been able to make the change. I'm going to make them now. We've got, what, less than two minutes to try and hold on to see how boys become sub-zero heroes one more time. Jurgensen misses his header. Tron Dagner Bratton clears for us now. We're looking at the last 30 seconds. They are defending to a man back there. Pettersson's off. He's still got the pace to beat a man. And he's, he's scored another one. God, he took a long route around their defender. But in the last knockings of extra time, he's gone from inside his own half. He's beat one. He's beaten two. He made hard work of getting around him. But he has the coolness to slot the ball past the Boda Glimp keeper. And we are going to win back-to-back -back doubles indeed. And we've done this one. Well, I was going to say we've done it the hard way. I think we've done it the Trump's darling way. Down to 10 men, into extra time. But the boys have got the job done. And Trondagna Bratton, if you include the Norwegian Super Cup, is lifting his fifth bit of silverware. 
in the last 13 months. And that has got to go down as another little tick in the Sub-Zero Hero column. The double-double, these boys now look set to dominate Norwegian football for the next three to five years. Even though we won't be around to be in charge of that spell of dominance. We've got one game left to play. You never know if we produce the mother of all miracles. Well, we might beat Manchester United, qualify for more European competition and take this into an extra series. It's a long shot, but it's the shot that we're coming back for.